the Democratic Party per se is not the root of this problem, that the root of this problem lies in the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, it lies in the wealthiest families in this country. Uh, enough is never enough for them. Uh, they always have new standards of, of their power. And uh, I, I do think, I mean, to be a little edgier, that the Democratic Party doesn't step up to where the edge of that is in the movements that we just talked about. It doesn't step up to where uh, the incredible anger is among even CWAers uh, who have a decent standard of living. Uh, uh, doesn't step up to the Verizons or the cable visions uh, all too often. But I think in New York City, we will step up, and that's what we can do, is send a clear message that not only are these firings uh, out of line, but the whole way that Verizon can operate in New York City is out of line. And when are we going to hold them accountable, not just as Democrats, but as the citizens in New York, cable vision is worse. Uh, and, you know, again, I could chew up all the minutes just on those companies, let alone every other company in every other industry. And I think the problem is when we supported this president uh, eight years ago, Employee Free Choice Act was on that agenda. I actually questioned him in Iowa about that. He said, I'll put on my shoes, and he never put his shoes on. He didn't put his shoes on in Madison, Wisconsin. I begged him, personally begged him. And, and Vice President Biden to go there. They didn't go. And, you know, Bernie, last two weeks ago, and this is not just about Bernie, but with no prodding, goes to Ingridion in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, with his shoes on, pickets with workers there, who got taken over uh, by a, a, a global corporation. And sadly, the first presidential candidate since 1968, Bobby Kennedy, to walk a picket line during a presidential campaign. I do say to Democrats, as a DNC member, enough's enough here, too. Which side are you on? We can't just settle for what's already here. It's not working. Look, I agree with Larry. Um, and we have both, we've both been in those meetings with the president and the vice yes, president we where we have um, fought that fight. And we've been pretty sharp um, uh, privately about these things. Um, but I think it's bigger than that. Because I think it's, you know, that a candidate, whether it's Hillary or whether it's Bernie, whoever the standard bearer is for the Democratic Party, the candidate is one thing. The movement is another. Mm -hmm. We believed when Barack Obama was elected, um, there was a savior complex around the country, that he was mm -hmm. going to be the next messiah. And he was going to, with his magic wand, be able to do everything. Now. There were things that I actually wish that he did that he didn't do on education, on other kinds of things, on EFCA and things like that. By the way, both Bernie and Hillary were the first endorsers in terms of EFCA when, when, uh, when, we, when we introduced employee free choice a long time ago. But the bottom line is it goes back to the issue about movements and what we can take for our own power. We have to bring, we have to force the Democratic Party to be the party of the working class again, of the middle class again. What has happened is that the Democratic Party has, because of the, of, of the um, of Citizens United, every candidate spends more time dialing for dollars than actually doing the work that they need to do, connecting to people. And that's why, and Larry actually was one of the first people who said this, but the intersection between the, the f of democracy and economy is the biggest problem we have. And the issue is, and this is, I think, where we diverge, yeah. the issue is how do we fix it? And how do we actually, un not, not how do we make the big speech, because we need the activists, but actually how do we also make sure that we get it fixed? And so the reason I think that people went after the labor movement, both the private sector and the public sector, deindustrialization killed the private sector labor movement. Deindustrialization. That's why I keep on going back to this. Because why is Germany different than us? Germany has a vibrant labor movement, has a vibrant industry. We can argue about whether some of that industry is wrong or right, but it has middle class jobs. So they're going after us because at the end of the day, organized labor is the only infrastructure, sorry for using that word, that actually creates power at the bargaining table and at the ballot box. So if we're gone, 
then what happens is it doesn't actually matter whether they have Citizens United or not. There's not another long-term infrastructure that creates that kind of ongoing power. Mm -hmm. And that's why the Friedrichs case, that's why Walker, that's why right. others go after us. And our argument with the Democratic Party is you got to understand that and actually have to have our back at this point in yeah. time.